Hey guys, so the topic for today is antioxidants. This antioxidants topic was previously tested in uh, NEET PG and it is recently asked in uh, uh, previous year also and it was tested in INISET too. So I have got this topic for you and someone has requested me to make a mnemonic on these uh, types of antioxidants like preventive and uh, chain breaking antioxidants. So I have got a mnemonic for that also and I have concise this topic of antioxidants in one single sheet so that you can have a screenshot and uh, revise it later. We also have many such videos in this channel guys so if you're new to this channel please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and get access to all the videos from different subjects for neat pg and inicet now let's get started with the topic proper which is antioxidants so in our body we generate a lot of free radicals during different metabolic processes so antioxidants are the substances which scavenge these free radicals and protect our body from the oxidative stress Antioxidants act by different mechanisms guys. So one is preventing the initiation of free radical generation and the second one is interruption of the chain sequence and the third one being removing the peroxidases. So peroxidases are the enzyme which produce reactive oxygen species guys. So these reactive oxygen species are prevented or stopped from being produced when we inhibit this peroxidase enzyme. So antioxidants does that job. Now coming to the types of antioxidants, so we have different types of antioxidants. One is enzyme antioxidant, the second one being vitamin and the third one being mineral. Let us discuss about enzyme antioxidants in detail first. So enzyme antioxidants are of three types. One is superoxide dismutase, second one is catalase and third one is glutathione peroxidase. Coming to vitamin, vitamins are three, E, A and C. Coming to minerals, manganese, copper and zinc act like cofactors for superoxide dismutase. That means for superoxide dismutase to function properly, manganese, copper and zinc are the cofactors or the minerals that are required. Similarly, for glutathione peroxidase, selenium is the compound that is required. So here I have written selenium containing enzyme is glutathione peroxidase. Now when we discuss about these uh, enzyme activity like what is the exact mechanism or what are the free radicals that they scavenge. When we discuss about superoxide dismutase the term itself tells that it converts the superoxide molecule that O2 minus with star indicates the free radical. So this superoxide molecule is converted into hydrogen peroxide by SOD and this hydrogen peroxide is converted into water and oxygen by catalase enzyme. So this is a chain reaction guys. Firstly superoxide dismutase mol uh, enzyme acts on superoxide free radical that converts into hydrogen peroxide H2O2 and that hydrogen peroxide is converted into water and oxygen by catalase. So these are the activities like mechanism of action of these two enzymes. Coming to glutathione peroxidase, glutathione peroxidase is something which has to be discussed in detail guys because you get many questions and it is uh, the most important uh, scavenging mechanism of free radicals. Coming to glutathione peroxidase, it is a selenium containing enzyme and you have this uh, cycle here which explains you exactly how glutathione peroxidase acts and what are the uh, elements that are needed for this cycle to run. Firstly, glutathione peroxidase converts this hydrogen peroxide free radical into water, right? In order to convert hydrogen peroxide molecule to water, glutathione peroxidase requires a reduced form of glutathione, guys. So this is a two-substrate, two two-compound reaction. So glutathione in the reduced form is required for converting this hydrogen peroxide into water molecule. So in order to have this glutathione in the reduced form, you need to have an enzyme, right? So that enzyme is glutathione reductase. So this reductase converts oxidized form of glutathione into its reduced form. In order to convert something from its oxidized form to reduced form, we require NADPH. So NADPH is converted into NADP plus and by providing one H plus this oxidized form is converted into the reduced form. In order to have this NADPH in our body, we need to have one cycle functioning that is HMP. As already discussed in one of the videos guys, in one of the mnemonics video, I told you that for HMP pathway, rate limiting enzyme is glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, right? So in HMP pathway, the rate limiting enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase helps us in providing with this NADH, NADPH that is required for this cycle to run. See, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase converts glucose 6-phosphate into 6-phosphoglucanolactone. This is the rate limiting enzyme of uh, HMP shunt pathway, guys. 
So this is how exactly this glutathione peroxidase acts. Whenever in the body this glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is deficient, it does not provide NADPH. See, I'll mark it with red so that you'll understand. See, whenever this G6PD deficiency is there, this NADPH will be decreased. When this NADPH is decreased, reduced form of glutathione is decreased. So finally, we cannot convert this peroxide molecules into H2O. That means this gets accumulated. When these peroxide molecules get accumulated, that is called as oxidative stress or that free radicals damages the cells or RBC and that there occurs the hemolysis, right? So that is what happens in G6PD deficiency disease. So you might have learned about G6PD deficiency disease or have come across many questions related to this disorder. It is an X-linked recessive disorder. See guys, I'm learning this, uh, I mean, I'm reading out this uh, sentences for you. So NADPH is necessary to keep the glutathione in its reduced form, right? I have already told you. This reduced form, we need NADPH, which in turn detoxifies the free radicals and the peroxidases. When there is a decrease in NADPH in RBC, that leads to hemolytic anemia due to pure RBC def uh, poor RBC defense against oxidizing agents. So the oxidizing agents that you need to remember here are fava beans, sulfonamides, nitrofurantoin, primaquine, chloroquine and anti-tuberculosis drugs. So these are the uh, substances which expose the RBC to the oxidative stress and infection being the most common one. So infections are the most common cause of this oxidative stress. So when this thing happens, the hemoglobin gets denatured guys. So this he denatured hemoglobin is called as Hinn's body. So remember like denatured hemoglobin is called as Hinn's body. So finally in the RBC, you have this denatured hemoglobin, right? So this denatured hemoglobin is called as Hinn's body. And when this RBC enters the spleen, the spleen removes the Hinn's body, like spleen removes the Hinn's body from the cell and the rest of our cell is called as bite cell because it looks like something is bitten off from the RBC. So this is the bite cell. So the two terminology that you need to remember in G6PD deficiency is Hinn's body and bite cell. So this completes the G6PD guys. It's a X-linked recessive disorder. You need to remember that. And the fava bean sulfonamides and anti-tubercular drugs, nitrofurantin are the oxidative uh, stress causing agents. And this is the cycle in which glutathione peroxidase acts. Now coming to one more enzyme guys. So there is lipid peroxide. Lipid peroxide is also a free radical. For that also you need glutathione peroxidase. In the reduced form, glutathione is converted to the oxidized form of glutathione. And in the process, this lipid peroxide is converted to lipid hydroxide, which is not uh, harmful to the body. This peroxide is harmful to the body. So this completes the discussion of glutathione peroxidase. Guys. You get a lot of questions from this topic, G6PD deficiency disorder, which is a X-linked disorder. Now that we have completed the enzymes, let us discuss about the vitamin guys. So vitamin E also has the same role like glutathione peroxidase which converts this lipid peroxide uh, free radical into lipid hydroxide or lipid hydroxic acid. Now coming to the minerals, as I already discussed, manganese, copper and zinc are first superoxide dismutase and selenium is the uh, element that is present in the glutathione peroxidase enzyme. This completes the types and the mechanism of action of different antioxidant guys. Now there is an important thing. Uh, previously the question was asked from this topic, this zone, that which acts by prevent, which are the preventive antioxidants and which are the chain breaking antioxidants. So first let us learn about chain breaking antioxidants guys. So we know that uh, in the alphabetical order, STUV comes together like PQRS to UV. So that is a chain, right? Chain of alphabets. So when you break this T from here, like T is break, broken and you put P there. So you have broken the chain of alphabets, right? So you write it as SPUV, that is superoxide dismutase, polyphenols, urate and vitamin E. You are getting my point, right? This is a chain of alphabets and you have broken it by putting P instead of T. So this is the mnemonic for chain breaking antioxidants, S, P, U and V. Now coming to the preventive antioxidants, the rest all like catalase, SOD is given here, right? So the remaining two enzymes, catalase, glutathione peroxidase comes under preventive and chelator of metal ions. And here you can remember uh, in one more method that in this preventive antioxidants I have C guys, mostly C like catalase, chelators of metal ions, ceruloplasmin. So everything C comes in preventive antioxidants and SPUV comes in chain breaking antioxidants guys. 
so this completes the topic of antioxidants uh, all the important points that you need to know and i have got a question for you guys so which of the following is a chain breaking antioxidant answer this thing in the comment section i'll come up with more such videos you can ask me the topics of difficulty in our telegram channel the links to which are provided in the description below thank you